Welcome to our Chemical of the Month for October 2009. Our scenario today is this. A chemical company has reported a slow release from a 4-inch pipe in a berm area. The pipe is labeled sodium hydroxide. The release is outside and the ambient temperature is 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Get your smart charts out. You ready? Our first step is a dispatch step that should only take about 20 seconds to size up this chemical spill. This is found on page 2 of your uh, charts. And the first question we want to ask ourselves is, is the first name of this chemical above or below the line? And our chemical today is sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is the chemical name and we're going to look on page 2 now for this chemical list. We can examine this list of 36 first chemical names here and when we look down the list alphabetically we find that sodium is in the list. So on page 2 of our smart charts that's an indication that this is yes it is a what we call a below the line chemical or a blue box chemical. We can also examine the second name in the name of the chemical here, sodium hydroxide, and see that it is not one of these NCHP chemicals that can produce toxic and flammable gases. So therefore, hydroxide is not an above-the-line chemical, it's a below-the-line chemical or a blue box chemical. So step number two is our verification step. We'll take two minutes just to make sure that we're on track. So again, we have a blue box chemical, and that means that sodium hydroxide is most likely going to have these tendencies. It can be a liquid or a solid. In this case, it's a liquid that's leaking into the berm area. So our hot zone will be about 150 feet, at least initially. We know that sodium hydroxide is not flammable, and that vapors, if any, are going to be heavier than air. We can also uh, examine this verification step by checking out the NIOSH book. Sodium hydroxide is listed, and we find that with a blue box chemical, again, it's going to be either a solid or a liquid. We also look at the chemical and physical properties in the NIOSH book, and we see that solubility is 111. And what this means is that 111 grams can dissolve in 100 milliliters of liquid. So that tells you that it is a very miscible solid, in this case, uh, forming this liquid. We also, again, know that there is no flash point. Consequently, there is no flammable range. This is a non-flammable type of chemical. And it's a very corrosive chemical, a very corrosive base, we call it, with pHs uh, extremely high, around pH 12, 13, or 14. So it will turn your pH paper blue. When we look at the blue box chemical hazards again, we can look at page 5 of our uh, smart charts and find that sodium again is listed as a first name for the non-flammable clues. The back name or the second name of this chemical is hydroxide, but that leads us down to the line number nine for hydroxides. And there it tells us that these types of chemicals can be toxic and very strongly corrosive, or in the case of this, it's strongly caustic. pH is again between seven and fourteen. What's recommended here is for pH indications for corrosive gases. Again, it will change the pH paper blue. Also, we could look at dust monitors for uh, airborne uh, qualities of these, this solid in the air. But in this case, we have a liquid. And then when we look at PA, PPE, our personal protective equipment, we'll talk more about um, uh, structural turnout gear and SCBAs being used along with level B and level C protection for uh, PPE. So what we have here for our playbook is a blue number nine, a blue nine in the playbook. So again, uh, step two, the verification step, uh, helps us to assure that we're on track. We know that we got a solid or liquid in this case with this hydroxide, not flammable, but very caustic. Again, pH is uh, greater than 7, but up to about 11, 12, 13, or even 14, and a very miscible chemical. 
And so the DOT placard and label for this uh, commodity in transportation would be the corrosive placard, class number eight. Step number three is the arrival or the get to work step. And this is where we're going to apply what we picked up from our chart our, for the blue box chemical and talk about our PPE. Again, this is chart number four that, that guides us on what PPE to decide to wear. Again, we can wear turnouts with SCBA up to 10% of the lower explosive limit with this material and also if, if this material is reacting or heating up. Level B will also work up to about 1% of the lower explosive limit. And level C will work also below IDLH levels. Our meter cockpit we talk about with uh, sometimes we don't know what's airborne because we can't see them. And a cockpit in an airplane sometimes flies blindly, but they rely on their instrumentation. So the instruments that we want to use for hazmat response would be, again, pH paper to indicate the uh, true nature of the liquid from a pH standpoint. But it could also indicate uh, an acid gas or a corrosive gas in the air. We can use dust monitors to help decide how much uh, this material is airborne. But another thing to think about is a, a possible temperature gun use because uh, this material will get very hot when it reacts. And so we can um, uh, scan the uh, containers and the area for increased temperature. And then finally, also consider a CGI, combustible gas indicator, because this material, when it combines with uh, metals, especially like aluminum, can produce hydrogen gas. So that's where the CGI would come in to indicate any uh, hydrogen or a uh, flammable gas production. And that's why turnouts in SCBA up to 10% LEL may be the ticket. Our final step is step number four, where we would actually make our entry. And we need to decide a couple things on whether it's a rescue mission or a work mission. Also remember the red light, green light concept, where uh, red light uh, type uh, uh, scenarios would be the things that would make you stop your your uh, entry and maybe even evacuate. So um, think about the uh, possibility of radiation, corrosive gases, especially uh, fluorine in the air, uh, increased temperatures again indicated by the temperature gun, and then also your CGI indicators. Anything greater than 10% LEL, you should probably evacuate and uh, think about another way to handle the problem. The green light indicators, again, would be using the pH paper and the dust monitor to uh, indicate what might be airborne. But again, a lot of what we do is mission driven, so you might want to really consider, is this a rescue mission or a work mission? If it's a rescue mission, uh, that would be a quick in and out to rescue people. But if it's a plumbing mission that you'll do for your work activities, you can consider uh, changing the atmosphere with ventilation rotating crews to prevent anyone from getting too tired or too heat exhausted. Also consider remote shutoff valves, so uh, maybe entry would be precluded. And then possibly a PPE change if you have to uh, indicate what you need to do uh, to change from level B to level C or even to level A, depending on the situation. Also consider waiting it out. Sometimes the best thing to do is nothing at a certain point and waiting might be your best option. So this month we talked about sodium hydroxide. This is uh, just a chemical of the month procedure to help keep you fresh with the use of the smart charts and the, the uh, procedure with the Hazmat IQ system. You can uh, look at more information at the same uh, site at the Hazmat IQ Learning Center. Uh, there is a little bit more information with uh, sodium hydroxide and also a video on sodium hydroxide reacting with aluminum to produce hydrogen gas. All right, uh, take care folks, stay safe, think smart, and we'll see you next month.